Hello everybody and welcome to a new tutorial. In today's tutorial we are going to be covering some cool speed lines. So as your character gets faster you can see these cool little streaks appear on the screen heading towards our camera and if he's not facing the same way they will still follow whichever way he's running. So you can see here they're going away from the camera because we're looking away from him. There we are. Cool. So this is actually a really really easy thing for us to set up. Um, and we're just going to need one emitter. So we are using Niagara and we are in 4.27, but this will just work in UE5 early access because um, it's using the same sort of stuff. So what we're going to do is anywhere in our folder, we're going to right click effects and then Niagara system. And we're just going to do a new system from selected emitters. And we're just going to stick in a fountain, just a little plus and press finish. And we're going to call this NS underscore Speed lines, and I'm just going to put a two at the end because I already have one. There we are. And now we'll open this up. And what we'll have is the default Niagara viewport here with fountain already placed in. Now we're going to use most of the things that are in here, but we're not going to use all of it. So we're going to delete the bits that we don't need. For example, we don't need gravity force. We don't want these to fall downwards. So we're going to get rid of gravity. Uh, we're going to get rid of our drag because we want these to be quite fast. And our velocity and cone, we're going to get rid of that because we're going to add our own velocity in in a moment. But here we go. Now what we have is a nice little ball of particles here. Um, and they already have a sphere location, but we're going to increase this sphere radius up to 100, like so. And next what we will do is we want to see where these are spawning. So with our sphere location here, you might be able to see there's this little square next to the tick. Or it's a cube actually. If you click this, it will render the debug for this sphere. So it will show us this sphere so you can see everywhere that these particles are going to appear. What we want to do is we don't want them to spawn in a perfect sphere. We're actually just going to cut this in half. So we're going to turn on hemisphere X and that will just give us this half here. There we go. So now we get this nice flat plane of surface and then into a semicircle. And then we can also turn on our surface band only if we wanted to and give that a little bit of thickness just so that they're spread out a little bit more. There we are. So uh, the next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that these are flying uh, towards our player. So what we'll do is in particle spawn, we're going to add a new module and we're going to grab ourselves and add velocity. And you can see here, uh, if we look right down here on the bottom left, we've got the X, Y, Z, and we are using the X hemisphere. We want them to fly this direction. So to the right of where we're currently looking. So that's negative X. We're going to give that a negative 500 value in the X and they'll all start flying that way, which is pretty cool. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to try and make these look a little bit streaky because right now these are just dots. We need them to be streaks. To do this in particle update, we're going to add a new module and we're going to grab ourselves a scale by speed. We want a scale sprite size by speed. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to change the size of this sprite based on how quickly it's moving. And we're going to put the min factor in the X to 0.05 as a minimum. In the Y, we want a 10 minimum, then a 0.1 in the maximum for the X, and we'll put 15 in the maximum for the Y. And now you can see we're getting these big streaky boys, but they're in all sorts of weird directions. OK, so this is not what we want. The next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that these are aligned to the way that they're traveling. To do this, we're going to use velocity alignment. So under Sprite Renderer, we'll give this a little click. Then over in alignment, we're going to change unaligned to velocity aligned. And now you'll see that they're all aligned to the direction that they're currently traveling. Awesome. Nearly there. The next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to make these less, uh, you know, less alive because you can tell, tell that they're uh, living a bit too long right now. So we're going to head to our initialized particle and our point attributes is already set to a random, but we're going to put this to something lower. So maybe 0.4 to 0.6. We want this to be really quick because we don't want them to keep living and have loads and loads of particles for no reason. There we are. Now, the next thing that we need, we can see that these are working, is that we, well, for starters, we're just actually going to change our color. So in our scale color, we can see here we're starting with a value of 1.01 uh, on the alpha. We're just going to lower this down to maybe 0.5. We want these to be barely visible. They might still be too visible. We'll check that after. So what we need to do now 
uh, now that we've got them looking and acting the way that we want is actually to change the way that these things spawn. So right now we're using a spawn rate, so it's just trying to spawn these 90 uh, every second. What we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this uh, entirely. We're going to delete the spawn rate. Bye bye. There we are. And we're going to add ourselves a spawn per unit. So we want these to only spawn when our character is moving at a certain speed. So our spawn spacing, we're going to put 10. So we want to spawn these every 10 units that the that the particle system moves. And we're going to give these uh, a bit of a higher movement tolerance. Um, but before we do that, we're just going to lower down the spawn probability to 0.1. And basically what this means is that for every 10 units that we travel, there's a 10% chance that we will spawn a particle. So it's not going to always spawn, so we're not going to get overwhelmed with particles. So we press save real quick, and we minimize this down, and drag this into the world. If we move this around, we should see some particles. There we go. You see we've got some particles here. Whee! Just a few. Now, they could do with being a little bit longer, but we can see how this works once it's attached to our character. So let's actually do that now. We'll attach this to our character. So we're going to select our character, and then we'll press Edit Third Person Character over on the side here. And you can see I've already got one set up here. I'm just going to delete this so you can see what I do. Uh, we're going to select the mesh. So inside the viewport, you can see we have our mesh here. We're going to select mesh, add a component, Niagara Particle System. Now, if you already have your system selected inside the content browser, it will automatically get this from context. Uh, if not, it will be empty. So if we just make sure that it's not selected, we put one in and you can see here it's empty. We can just drag this in and drop him down. And now we have our speed lines inside of this uh, little guy. Now then, what we're going to do real quick is we're going to rotate this around 90 degrees so that it's facing the correct way. And we're just going to raise it up a little and put it out ahead of him because we want these things to, you know, spawn in the direction that he's running, but in a distance so that they've got time to pass by him. The next thing that we need to do on our character movement component now, just to test this out, by default, your walk speed is going to be 600. We're just going to ramp that up to something high, like 4,000. We'll press compile. And then if we press play and run around, we should see some speed lines. Here we go. We've got some speed lines. Now these are a little bit too strong still. So what we can do is we can just open this guy up. We can head back to our scale color, grab our first point here, and we're just gonna lower this down to 0.1. Let's try that, compile and save him. Minimize play for now. And now we've got some real subtle speed lines there. Cool. Obviously, the last thing that we really want to do with this is we just want to get rid of that ball. Uh, we don't need that ball anymore. That was just so that we've got a reference to where this guy is and how they're spawning. So we're just going to go back into the system and on our sphere location, we're just going to turn that back off. We're going to press compile, and save. And now we have no ball. But when we're moving quickly, we have some nice speed lines. Yay, cool. So if you want to have these spawn more often, you can increase the spawn chance. So let's go back into here now and we'll head to our spawn per unit. We can put our spawn probability to one, which is 100%. And then if we run around, we'll probably see quite a lot more of them. Here we go. We so you can lower or higher that depending on how many of them that you want. Um, whoosh. Yay. Speed lines. Cool. That's it. Nice and quick. Yay. Now, I know it's been a while since I've been gone. I'm back now. Moved house, new computer, new equipment. Um, yep. So I'm going to start making content again for you guys. So with that said, I'm going to say something I've never said before. If you liked the video and it helped you, you can like and subscribe. <laughs> it really helps me out. It doesn't cost you anything, um, but it, it will help the channel grow. And it lets me see that you guys are enjoying the stuff that I make. I am planning to come back and make more content on a more regular basis. That's the plan. So you can find my Twitter and my Discord in the description. You'll get some links for those. You also have a link to my Patreon. 
Uh, if you do join the Patreon, you'll get all of the files for the stuff that we make in the tutorials. Rather than having to make it yourself, you'll just have them there for download available to you. What I'm going to try and do is everything that I'm going to make as a tutorial, before I actually make the tutorial, I'll post it to the to the Patreon first so people on Patreon actually get the content before we make it on the video. There we go. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.